right, it's raining, but let's take a look at Retchploitation. So this is 151 pages. It's by the Red Room. Once again, it does have Retch, uh, so you know who uh, who's making it. Um, there's the cover. There's the spine. There's the back. It is PDF and print on demand uh, on Drive Through RPG with link down in the description. Here's a quick flip through. It's going to let you do uh, exploitation type adventures um, and hijinks and whatnot. Uh, it does have a good section here on this different subgenres, and as well as telling about different types of uh, movies within that within this genre here, and a huge uh, selected filmography, and tons of movies going back all the way to like the 30s with Reefer Madness, all the way up to like Machete in 2010. I do like this. We do not recommend any of the remakes. So what I want to do here, because this is a big part of what this book's about, is obviously the exploitation movie genres. But I want to pinpoint in one in particular. It's what I would use this book for. It's a genre that I really enjoy, which is black exploitation films. I had uh, considered at one point making a uh, black exploitation role playing game. Other people have done it. It's vastly under uh, accounted for in the role playing game, uh, you know, products. But uh, we're going to first talk a little bit about the black exploitation movies. Because I think what it needs to do is, while it has subgenres, I would point you towards uh, the genre that is kind of what, the subgenre, I should say, that kind of really made it explode onto the scene really loudly and very influential. And that's the black exploitation movies of the early 70s. So it's going to start with uh, Cotton Comes to Harlem, which is a 1970s, a film I haven't seen yet, but I need to. And then one that's really well known is called Sweet Sweet Back's Badass Song in 1971. It stars Melvin Van Peebles, and it's it's also kind of known as you know kind of a pioneer of the first black exploitation films. And then of course you've got Shaft. I do own Shaft, but it's in digital, and that's in 1971, and that's going to be one of the the big big movies of black exploitation films. And then you've got Superfly that comes out in 1972, also a very huge influential movie. Now I'm going to go through a couple movies because some of them are in even more subgenres of black exploitation. So why should you? Uh, obviously, these movies. There's a lot of these movies are really good. Some of them are not so good, but they really represent the genre quite well in different facets of the genre. So, what is there to get out of it in a role playing game sense? What this book is going to allow you to do to a degree. It's not perfect in what it, in in the direction of black exploitation that I would use it for, but it is very good at getting you that those first steps. So, why would anybody care about black exploitation films in a role playing game sense? Well. A lot of things that people enjoy are kind of underdog characters, characters that have been kind of trampled on, and they take uh, the, their power and their ability to change the world around them uh, in their own hands and kind of skirt around the laws. And yes, a lot of them deal with kind of the seedy underbelly of crime and criminal networks, drugs, prostitution. But there's some really, really great heroes going up against some great antagonists in these films. So um, that's really where it lies. And then if you meld into that, uh, movies, you know, late 70s, early 80s movies of monster movies such as uh, Chud or Humanoids from the Deep, you get this really cool urban um, horror mixed with black exploitation heroes. There's heroes to be found and villains to be uh, defeated. And that's really the thing that's the same throughout all the stuff we love, be it cowboy movies, you know, the Wild West, be it, uh, you know, Vikings, be it pirates, whatever the genre kind of is, it's always about uh, a group of people that skirt the law and take their fate to their own hands, uh, usually, of course, with violence. And black exploitation is, is uh, no different. Now, granted, there are a lot of government political, social issues that, you know, rain down upon the uh, the protagonists of black exploitation movies. But I have a great collection. I want to show you some of the stuff if you want to get a head start and kind of go through some of the subgenres here. Actually, it's a subgenre of a subgenre. So I, I talked about Superfly. So here's Superfly. This is the soundtrack by Curtis Mayfield, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is one of, Superfly was one of the, the, in my opinion, it's one of the most influential, and many other people's opinion, of course, influential uh, black exploitation movies. It's got a great story. It's got a very small script. There's a lot of 
filmed. A lot of the film is of people walking and driving. But Curtis Mayfield's soundtrack here actually outsold the movie. That's how good it is. And so you can see here, I don't have the CDs with me because they are in my car. As that's It's a really, really good uh really good soundtrack so that one is definitely one to, to look for is of course the great soundtrack and superfly also did a lot of stuff too it influenced really the fashion as well as the vehicles of the kind of pimp look of um the black exploitation films and it did a great job all throughout it so it's a very it, i would rate that one quite high the next is the mac now the mac came out a little bit later but it's got richard Pryor and a guy named max julian it's not a hundred percent of black exploitation film but it is very good, and uh, he it's it's definitely one that's up there as being um, you know very very profitable for black exploitation films. Now here's one that I'm going to recommend something huge, and in fact I'm going to go ahead and tell you uh, the DVD is a little bit banged up here, and some of them I got on digital, some I got on DVD. But Isaac Hayes and Truck Turner is one of my favorite, if I, I believe it is my favorite black exploitation film. Truck Turner is just a great film. Isaac Hayes does an amazing job. It starts off jovial, and then it really ramps up in the drama and the action. And uh, it's got some comedy, but then it gets really serious really quick. And uh, it's very good. Hammer with Fred Williamson is also very good. But my money is definitely on Truck Turner. It's a must watch, in my opinion. Now, Coffee by Pam Greer is real well known. Of course, there was another movie that came out, um, Foxy Brown that was very much kind of, the, it was almost like a remake of this, but this one is also well known. I actually prefer coffee to Foxy Brown. Then you've got Fred Williamson in Black Caesar. He does an incredible job in this role. He is charismatic. He's just a fantastic, fantastic uh, kind of anti-hero in this movie. Uh, it does kind of end a little bit on the, I think, a, not a, not, it doesn't, it doesn't finish. A lot of these movies have a problem of not finishing as well as they started. But Black Caesar is very good. And it's followed up by Hell in ha Up in Harlem. Hell Up in Harlem is not as good. It's got some funny stuff in it. And, but it's a lot of action and it's still a lot of fun. Next is The Black Godfather. So a lot of them kind of went on this kind of Godfather type uh, theme. Kind of the same with Black Caesar. And uh, this main character here, uh, the actor Rod Perry, he's very good throughout the film. Again, I just don't think it ends very well. And then we're going to go into another sub-sub-genre here, and that's Blackula. Now, Blackula is actually a very good film, and it kind of delves into the, the horror aspect of black exploitation because black exploitation, uh, really, I should say, exploitation films and black exploitation films kind of went into westerns. They went into prison movies. I'm not really fond of those as much. I, I enjoy the more city life uh, aspects. Blackula's got this as well as this horror genre mixed with it. But it's a it's actually a really good film. Scream Blackula Scream, the second one, is not as good. It starts off strong with this cool voodoo vibe, uh, which you can get a lot of inspiration from role playing from. But uh it's there it's still really, really good. Now this one is not very good, but again, showing you Blackenstein, showing you uh kind of the the uh yeah, again, kind of the horror genre that came from it, um, you know, from the black exploitation films. Now this one, then we go into the comedy. So a lot, a lot of people know Dolomite. Uh, I love this bone crushing, skull splitting, brain blasting action, Rudy Ray Moore. It's extremely fun. It says Dolomite with all his, with his all girl army of Kung Fu killers. This is fun. This is low budget. It's a lot of, a lot of comedy. Um, it is really, really a, just a fun time. Um, it's, it was made in 1974. And uh, it's just a blast of just a mix of good black exploitation and comedy. And then later on, I'm going to get you suck. It came out by the Wayans, and uh, it's a fun movie as well. A lot of comedy. So it obviously is a, you know, that was definitely a, a thing that they decided to start doing is just kind of making fun of uh, the whole black exploitation genre. And then you've got Black Dynamite, which oh my god, I love this film. Absolutely hilarious. It is a spoof on black exploitation films. It's got a lot of famous people in it, um, including like uh, Black Dynamite's played by Michael J. Jai White. Um, it's got Arsenio Hall. It's got Tommy Davidson. It's just a blast and uh, highly recommend that. So, yep, there it is, Black Dynamite as well. So 
those are some great films. There's other ones too uh, that you could check out uh, to get you in the mood for playing Rexploitation. So uh, let's go ahead and take a little bit more of a delve into it. There's not going to be too much more to say about it, actually. Uh, it's got some subgenres. Like I said, some of these I just don't really care too much about. There were some Italian ones that were made, they spotlight. There were some that involved, like here it says, like torture, sex, sad sadism, and gore. This is going to be a little bit of a, a not safe for work video, by the way. Uh, it's called, I guess, Nazi Ploitation, a genre built around Nazis performing medical experiments tormenting prisoners and having kinky sex in brothels. I'm not very interested in that as well, but it is in there. Again, like I said, women in prison, nunsploitation. I've never even really seen any of those films. So very more aggressive uh, rape and revenge type movies that doesn't really get it for me. And of course, I do like gore in films, but when it comes to exploitation films, I'm all about black exploitation uh, because it has good stories, good characters all around, and some great action. So... Retroploitation is going to be uh, pretty much what you know about these wretched games. You know, the basics, everything you know, it's got the seven uh, transgressions, wrath, greed, sloth, pride, lust. Uh, same with the other ones, envy and gluttony. You're going to pick one of those, and then you're going to get benefits should you, your character, who's going to be a, uh, and really it fits kind of with black exploitation movies, a kind of an anti-hero a little bit, a little bit of not a great person, more of the, a little bit of a villain. So normal abilities here, D20 system, same as before. If you play one wretched game, you're going to be able to smooth right into uh, one of these other wretched games because it's pretty much going to have the same system. It's got the archetypes back again. So you've got stuff like Assassin, which might be a hired gun archetype, or the Ninja. And, of course, right there, you're already getting, a, you know, just those two can incorporate a lot of black exploitation type films. Serial Killer, Common Citizens, Accidental Heroes, Outsiders, Potential Suspects. Uh, likely villains, and then you've got some uh, some options here, uh, optional like magic and stuff like that. Of course, it's going to be you know part of it. So you can have a conjurer, an investigator, a cultist, private eye, uh, a reporter. There's a rogue, a dominatrix. I guess for some of those more sex type uh, subgenres, gun toting hobo. I like that. Hustler, none with bad habits. Some interesting art there. A made man, a man of action, an avenging angel, crazy cop, biker gang leader, martial artists, Yakuza, cult leaders, mad priests, a uh, whole bunch of stuff here when it comes to uh, your character classes and your archetypes, shamans. And then you're going to have the same kind of layout for your your uh, your tables. you got psychic talents for the psychic class. Uh, it looks okay. I, I mean, it's going to have a lot of, of some cool art that was done back in the day. Your perks and drawbacks Vehicles in the game, so that's going to obviously play a big part of it, especially if you're doing a black exploitation movie with chases and stuff like that. You can do some customization of vehicles, uh, rules for social standing once again. This is all very, uh, very much the exploitation type of, uh, of game with the same type of skills, some different languages and stuff, a lot of them focusing more on some different areas of the world, telling you about... Uh, you know, your different skills you've got, and then breaking down the perks and drawbacks. These are going to be pretty big, like contacts and stuff like that. It's going to help you, I think, in a black exploitation type game. Uh, of course, you might have an addiction in your drawbacks, paranoia, and then experience, the same type of thing. You're going to have the Wretched Commandments again, honor no one, thou shalt kill, thou shalt steal. If you do these, you'll get experience points, bonuses, thou shalt role play the, uh, thy role, thou shalt play thy role, I should say. Uh, thy shalt be de devious and untrustworthy. So a lot of these are going to really fit within this genre. Again, the wanted level, as you start doing more shithead things, your wanted level is going to go up and people are going to want to know you, are going to know you, your infamy is going to start to rise and then people are going to want to try to take you down, which is of course uh, perfect in the uh, black exploitation films. And then we've got combat, pretty normal weapons, attacks, modifiers. Uh, you've got mad maneuver table when uh, you're doing some some car chases which is cool you're going to make a roll and add of course your your drive skill or your stunt driver perk and see whether or not you've completed uh some sort of mad maneuver you might do in a vehicle how to heal damage rules for of course short bursts and auto fire since you need to add those into this game um, suppressive fire and the like and then we've got again pistol duels and sword duels we saw those in uh, Wretched Space, your normal critical 
kits with weapons and blades, firearms, and then a section on magic and the supernatural. And I really enjoy some of the low budget monster movies of like the 70s and 80s that mainly take place in a city. And I think those really gel well with black exploitation. You can have a group of people that, um, you know, a city's being besieged by some sort of dark forces, cultists, or monsters, and then these great characters straight out of a black exploitation movie as bigger than life heroes are going to take out these uh, these bastards that are ruining their town, their city. So a lot of spells and stuff like that. And then a lot of stuff for psych uh, psychic psychics and the paranormal. And here's a cool era, cool section here, developing psychic talents. It kind of breaks down the history of like the CIA and the world wars and what the you know the Nazis as well as some certain you know government projects did to give people psychic abilities or to bring out their psychic talents as you can see and then we've got a bestiary it does have again the apostles of pain so those run through all the wretched games like the you know, the cinnabites they are aquatic dinosaur banshee color of space so a little bit of hp lovecraft a doppelganger dinosaurs ghouls giant crab giant shark um, you've got a Sasquatch, Hellhounds, a Spectre, something I can't even pronounce, a pig-faced humanoid minion, a vampire, a werewolf, and those are, of course, going to go great if you want to try to do, like, Black uh, Blackula. Common creatures you might find, uh, you know, cobras, crocodiles, bears, if you want to introduce those into your game. And then there's some human foes, like the Cat Burglar, Enforcer, Hitman, Martial Artist, Soldiers, uh, SWAT Team, Police Officer, of course, they're going to up against you and then there's some quick npcs you can roll up on a d20 uh right here game members health professionals journalists and then we've got the section here which i'm not going to uh read but i'm going to let you know obviously some thoughts on consent and safety tools by sylvia and then final words by miguel so this is them um talking about how they don't use safe words these are adult games you should obviously know that by by reading it um, you should know what you're getting to within a game like this. They do not adhere towards safety rules or anything like that. Everybody that's playing this should be an adult and understand exactly what they're about to get into. And Miguel kind of does the same thing of kind of, um, you know, letting people know his two cents about what's going on currently, uh, with, the uh, with role-playing games and don't be a dick, but also saying, look, we're going to push back against some of this, um, this behavior that's now rampant in the role-playing game uh, industry. And they're going to say, look, you know, this is not for us. We're here to have fun and make adult games. Uh, obviously, if you're playing a wretched character, that's what it's going to be. And so you need to, uh, you know, throw that other stuff away. Now, that may not be your way of doing it. Um, I do agree with a lot of what they say here. But I would read this to let you know exactly what the Red Room is about in their games and what they believe. Of course, it could be completely different than yours. And then you got the character sheet and it's it's okay, it's serviceable. I'm not a big fan of kind of the smaller uh, areas here to write. Uh, and you should probably have like a black and white one so that it's easier to print. Now, what does this game here, exploitation lack? I would like to have seen a section, of course, because my focus is so much on black exploitation films. I would have loved to have seen a, a section that kind of explains more about black exploitation movies. Because out of all those subgenres, it is the biggest, most influential, and the best, in my opinion. Uh, with some of the biggest stars of the time, grossing the most amount of money, and just to have a you know making some good films, uh, even though sometimes they may not uh, you know seal the deal at the end of the film. Is a section more on black exploitation, how to do with black exploitation, uh, maybe setting or campaign, some of the antagonists or stories, uh, plot hooks you may have. Uh, and maybe a section in there if you want to play a black exploitation movie, not a movie that's made in historical 1973, let's say, but more of some of the, if you want to reproduce, almost kind of like a, we're making a video a role playing game on a bad black exploitation movie with low budget, um, you know, bad lighting, bad acting, some of those things that could carry over into the rules so that you can actually reproduce that. So not something historical, you are reproducing a black exploitation film in your game. So that's one thing that I like to differentiate between. Uh, black exploitation is not historical. It is what it is. It is a black exploitation film. So you are going to have several aspects of it that go throughout all the movies. 
Um, and that is going to be lower budgets, maybe some bad acting, like I said before, bad lighting, some funny action, or some comedy here and there, maybe some kung fu. So, you know, rules that say, like, everybody knows kung fu. If you want to have a fun kind of slapstick comedy black exploitation setting or campaign, you know, in, incorporating some of those things uh, that the films do in a kind of fun light and reproduce those in the game rules themselves in a different section that says, hey, if you want to play like you're in one of these movies, not that you're playing in 1973 Harlem, but if you're playing in one of these movies, this is these are the things you need to do, or here's some stuff to help you along if you want to do that. So what I take away from it, it's it's good. Uh, I'd like to have seen a section like that, but that's just my own preference for black exploitation. I'm not into, like I said earlier, I'm not into some of the other subgenres, but some people might be. I didn't even know that non-exploitation non films were even existed. But I hope some of the films you will check out my biggest, biggest recommendation is to watch Truck Turner because it's, I think it's criminally underrated and it is my favorite black exploitation movie. But of course, go watch The Mat, go watch Superfly, go watch Shaft, and uh, watch Blackula too because it is quite good. Anything with Fred Williamson in it too is fantastic. So uh, there it is, Retsploitation. Uh, it's got some cool stuff in it. It's going to give you what you need. And check out the black exploitation genre in films. Some of them might be hard to find. That's why a lot of mine are DVDs. I was searching for them high and low, anywhere I could find them. I do have a lot that I was able to pick up uh, digitally on Vudu and some other sources. But uh, Black Dynamite, if you want to have a really good laugh at the genre as a whole, uh, with some just incredible comedy and some great actors in it as well. So there it is. Retsploitation. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. i got a lot more. Thanks.